Hello and welcome to our video today. Our video today is titled Getting Started with Rad Autocomplete Box. So what is Rad Autocomplete Box you may be asking? So Rad Autocomplete Box allows the end user to easily fill in text thanks to autocomplete functionality and tokens of text. So this behavior is similar to the two field of Outlook and Facebook where you're filling in the recipients to which you are going to send a new message. So let's go ahead and jump straight into Visual Studio 2012 and get started from File New Project and show you what this powerful control can do. So here we are, we're inside of Visual Studio 2012. Let's go ahead and begin by going File New Project and I'm going to just simply select Telerik and I'm going to come over to C Sharp RAD Controls Windows Forms Application and I'm just going to give this a name of RAD Auto Complete Box WF for WinForms and then press the OK button. Once I've done that you'll see the Project Configuration Wizard has launched and the only component that I'm going to need to add a checkbox to here is going to be Telerik.WinControls.UI and you'll see that it automatically added Telerik Common to our application as well as Telerik.WinControls. From there I'm going to go ahead and hit the finish button. So now our project has finished spinning up. We can look underneath references here and we can see that it has automatically added in Telerik.WinControls Telerik.WinControls.UI and then finally Telerik.Common. I'm just going to come back up and collapse references and I'm going to double click on my Form 1. I'm going to go ahead and resize my Form 1 so I'm going to go down to where it says size and I'm just going to type in some numbers here. I'm going to type in 321 uh, 154. Of course you don't have to size it. I'm just sizing it where you're going to be able to see it a little bit easier. Now what we need to do is we need to actually drag a RAD autocomplete box onto our form here. So we're going to go up to our view and I'm going to select toolbox and I'm just going to type in auto and it will automatically find it and that is found under RAD controls editors 2012 Q3. So I'm going to drag and drop that onto my form. So once I've done that, I'm going to go over to Dock. And under Dock, I'm just going to let it fill the entire content area. So now we have our Form 1 that's displayed, and we have a RAD autocomplete box already on the screen. So I'm going to close out of that window, and we'll just go ahead and save our project. So before we get started actually building anything, I'm going to go ahead and add in a couple of images. So as we start working through the autocomplete box, we're going to make this application uh, give you the appearance of being online or offline and away and busy for the person that you actually typed in. So let's go ahead and add in a couple of images. So I'm going to go here underneath uh, our properties here and I'm going to go to resources and I'm just going to switch this to images and I have four images that I'm just going to simply drag over and drop into this file here. So you can see we have a status away, a status of busy, offline, and then another one that is online. And we could just go ahead and close out of this. Those resources are saved and of course you can see them right here as well. So I think we should go ahead and run this application and show you what it looks like just kind of out of the box. I'm just going to go ahead and close out of this so you can see I could type in maybe the word Michael Crump and then hit a semicolon and that has now one new item. I can go from there and go ahead and type in another name here and type in a semicolon and that is another item. Of course I can remove one of them as well by clicking on the X. Let's go ahead and add in some code that will allow us to do this programmatically. So in this quick sample what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back underneath our initialize component and I'm going to change the delimiter to a comma and I'm also going to go ahead and set in a couple of different items. So if I run the item 
the application again, you'll see we automatically have a couple of different countries listed here. And of course, I could type in maybe the UK, and you'll see that my new delimiter is a comma. So you'll just have to trust me that I'm typing a comma here. But this is just the beginning of, of what all we're about to do with this application. So let me go ahead and close it again. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to remove this code that I added. And I'm now going to go ahead and start adding in some more meaningful data. So I'm going to come up to my project and I'm going to right click, I'm going to go add, and I'm going to go class. I'm just going to name this class person and I'm going to hit OK. Now that that's in place, I'm going to remove what I already have and drop in a code snippet. So you can see we still have our person class. We inside of our constructor, we have an ID, a full name, an email, and then a status, which is an enum that's listed here. And of course, here's the public properties listed here with just a typical getter and setter. So I'm going to close out of my person class, make sure it saves that. And I'm going to go back to my form1.cs and let's go ahead and view the code again. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drop in two more lines of code. So the first one is accepts return. So this is just a Boolean that gets or sets a value that indicates whether pressing enter in a multi-line text box control creates a new line of the text in the control or it activates the default button of the form. We're going to set that to true. The multi-line is also another Boolean that's just going to simply get or set a value indicating whether this is a multi-line text box. So this is going to help out a little bit with our formatting here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to instantiate a new person class. So what I'm going to do is right before our form one, I'm just going to simply paste in this binding list of person, persons equals new binding list person. So once that's in place, I can go ahead and I can start adding in, again, some of the mean, more meaningful data. So underneath my multi-line, I'm just going to simply drop in another code snippet that says persons.add, and I'm going to add some new, a new person. So I've got one called Joe Smith, Adam and a couple of other ones listed here. And the thing that you want to pay attention to is that our enum that we defined earlier, you'll see we have an away status, a busy status, offline, online, and they're all listed here. Once that's in place, we need to set our autocomplete data source to our person's bonding list that we defined here. After that, we need to set our value member which if we hover over we can see exactly what this, this field is. So this is going to be the property name which is used to extract a value from the items as well as the autocomplete display member. And the display member is actually going to be the full name. So this is what is going to be shown. So that's all that's required to go ahead and get started with this part of the demo. So before I run this application I'm going to simply come up here and before I add in my accept return, I'm going to set the text of the red autocomplete box to just a string.empty where it doesn't show anything inside of it. And I'll go ahead and I will press start here. So I press start and as you can see here, we now have our red autocomplete box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start typing in the word Joe. So you see that it found the word Joe Smith and actually, since I just put J-O, you can see that it also found Sebastian Johnson. So Joe Smith, we've added in. We've added in Adam Peterson here, and then Jack Russell. Of course, if I wanted to add in my own custom one, I could have again just type in Michael Crump and do a semicolon, and that item will then be added. So I'm going to close back out of this demo and I'm going to come back underneath the multi-line and start adding in a token validating event. So I'm going to simply paste this line in here. So we have rad autocomplete box one dot token validating. And then I'm going to drop in a code snip underneath our 
form one. Let's go ahead and clean up our using statements here. So we're just going to be adding in uh, telerate.winControls.ui where it understands what this token validating event arg is. So looking at the validation logic, it's pretty easy to follow. So the end user, they can enter names, but these names uh, should not contain any sort of digits. If the names are known, so if we had valid email addresses stay behind them, the tokens can be created and formatted. If the names are unknown, tokens should not be created because no real email address stays behind the name. So the end user can enter email addresses and tokens will be automatically created for them. We're going to see in just a second what some of the sample data for this validation will look like. But I just wanted just to kind of go ahead and show you this uh, while we're here. So let's take a quick look at this in action. So I'm going to run my application here. I'm going to type in Lee Cooper. You can see that one works out just fine. Then I'm going to type in new person uh, 99 at gmail.com. You can see that one validates. Adam Peterson would that will validate as well. Joe Smith validates as well. If I just type in the word Michael Crump and do a semicolon, you'll see that it did not validate based off of that. And this is based off of the criteria that we just set. So let's go ahead now and let's set up some of the coloring and use some of the images that we talked about a little bit earlier. So I'll close this out again. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create another class here. So I'm going to go add class. I'm going to paste in this class called tokenize block with status bullet and then I'm going to hit OK. I'll begin by fixing my using statements very quickly and then finally adding in a code snippet that will be used for this project. So we have implemented tokenize text block element we're setting a status bullet as a light visual element, which is found in our Telerate.WinController.UI. We have a protected override type of theme effective type. So it just has a getter set here. And then inside of that, we have an override void of create child elements. Of course, if you implement this interface, then you get these methods. So we have a this.status bullet equals new light visual element. We're going to stretch it. We're going to turn off stretch horizontal. We're going to create a margin with a padding. Then we're going to insert a this.status bullet. And then the image, this.status bullet.image, is going to be coming from our rad autocomplete box.property.resources.status offline. And then finally, this is our property for our status image that's going to be displayed um, regardless if the person is online, offline, away, or busy. So now that we have that in place, I'm going to come back to my form one and I'm going to drop in another event here that's going to be called our create text block. So this occurs when an instance of the Telerik.WinControls.UI.text block is created and if I scroll down just a tad then I can paste it here and inside of this you'll see that we have if e dot text block is a tokenized text block element so it'll check then e dot text block equals new tokenized block with status bullet but we still haven't set up the formatting of that text block so we need to come back up to the top and we will drop in yet another event that's called text block formatting. So this occurs when the text block is formatting. I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom. And from here, I'm going to paste in our last code snippet. So you can see we have a tokenize block with status bullet token equals e dot text block as tokenize block with status bullet. So we're checking to see if it's null or not. Then we're setting a gradient style of solid. We're checking for the person. If the person exists, then we can use a, a simple switch 
statement that determines what type of back color, border color, and status image that's going to be set. And as you can see, we have one set for offline, away, busy, and online. So let's just scroll back up to our persons where we can see this in action. And if we run the application, we will just begin with Lee Cooper. And you can see that Lee Cooper from down here at the bottom, his status is offline. Again, we'll do our new person 99 at gmail.com. That one exists as well as you, and you, you can see hopefully in the demo the images are showing up here. Another example would be our Adam Peterson. So Adam Peterson of course has a different color icon and we can look him up and see that he's busy. We can look at a Joe Smith we can see that he is actually away right now. And then our final one that we need to take a look at is Daniel Finger. And Daniel Finger, of course, his color is green and his icon is set here to a online status. And we can see that down here at the bottom. So thank you again for watching this video and please tune in to tv.telerik.com for more videos and check out blogs.telerik.com for the latest news and announcements. Thank you.